court summoned the Inspector General of Police to physically appear in this court at 10 a.m. to clarify and explain why summons issued to him in respect of the second to the fourth petitioners have not been complied with. The summons were issued on the 26th of August 2024, requiring the acting IG to appear in court on the 3rd of September 2024 over alleged abduction of three persons, second to the fourth petitioners, whose whereabouts are unknown since the 19th of August 2024, in what the petition describes to be actions by agents of the first respondent. The acting inspector general of police, that is the first respondent, has not availed himself as directed and has instead sent his representative, the deputy inspector general of police, to appear on his behalf. On the, 9th, on the 5th of September 2024, Ms. Mwangi for the Inspector General of Police pleaded with the court stating as follows. The Inspector General of Police has not said he is not coming. He is requesting for another date because it is our position that the second and fourth respondents are not with the police. The Inspector General is requesting another date to appear because we are without his officers who would explain. The ID is requesting another date to appear in court after, uh, and then in brackets after holding brief consultation, Ms. Mwangi said the ID will come on the Monday, 9th of <coughs> September 2024. The officers of the ID, sorry, the, officer, the officers of the ID are here and have confirmed his availability on Monday considering his work and duties. End of quote. In spite of the very stiff opposition from the petitioner's side, the court, after the Inspector General skipped the attendance at 3 p.m., which the court had reluctantly extended on the 5th of September 2024, extended the matter to the 9th of September 2024, estimately noting as follows. The stream of reasons and excuses by the Inspector General of Police are definitely bound to run out. To proceed at this juncture, though an extra make a finding of contempt of court may be seen as premature in a grave matter of contempt of court, which is a form of criminal sanction, bear, uh, if, as an offense against administration of justice. Our constitution requires a high threshold for criminal matters. Reluctantly, the reasons for non attendance today must thus be considered. It is, for, it is thus necessary that I postpone these proceedings to Monday, the 9th of September 2024. The Inspector General, having already indicated his availability on this particular day, should have no further excuse but to comply and attend court physically at 10 a.m. so that this court can put this matter to an end. In spite of what transpired on 5th of September 2024, as indicated above, we are here on the same spot today. As, as of 5th of September 2024, it is evident that the court had directed the Inspector General to attend the court and was clear to the respondents that delegation had been declined by the court. We are now back to the same stream of excuses that the court had clearly listed for snubbing the summons by the head of the police who should be explaining to the court whether or not the Kenyans in question are in the hands of the police, or if not, what has been done to avoid or to get to the bottom of the matter. The court appreciates that the Inspector General of Police can delegate, and that is possible in law. It also appreciates the fact that the Deputy Inspector General of Police is a high-ranking position, and the DAG can actually me, sorry, the position of director to inspector general of police is a high ranking position in the police service. However, the matter at hand may not practically be dealt with by way of a delegation, considering that summons have since mutated to what the court considers to be contemptuous conduct. What simply what simply the inspector general has done is displaying an attitude that he is either too busy to be bothered by the court orders, or even when there are matters when there are matters relating to life and safety of Kenyans, 
which he is required to protect. A failure to appear in court pursuant to a duly issued summons amounts to a direct contempt, particularly where the opportunity to appear has been extended and ignored. This is willful disobedience that undermines not only the authority of the court, but the supremacy of the law and administration of justice generally. Such an attitude affects the rule of law and makes the citizens vulnerable, knowing that the law cannot protect them. It may be the same feeling that the petitioners in this petition now feel, considering the conduct of the first respondent so far. The constitution of this country has given this court the mandate to uphold and enforce it on behalf of Kenyans. The Inspector General of Police is a state officer established under is a state office established under Article 245 of the Constitution. He is appointed under Article 245.2 and bestowed with a mandate to exercise independent command of the National Police Service and to pertain to any functions prescribed by the national legislation. Article 74 of the Constitution provides that the prior to assuming state office, state officers must take oath of office. It provides as follows. Before assuming office, state before assuming state office, acting in state office or performing any functions in a state office, a person shall take and subscribe to the oath of affirmation of office in the manner prescribed in the then schedule or under the Anarcha Parliament. The oath taken by state officers, such as the first respondent, have one common denominator. They swear allegiance to the Constitution. This shows that the exact place the Constitution occupies as a reassurance to the public that state or public officers entrusted with public power will always be guided by the constitutional values and principles. That they will rule that they will respect the rule of law, human rights, be accountable, and act professionally, among others. It will require them to abide by the orders of the courts as a guardian of the constitution and constitutional order. Yet, it has now become commonplace that individuals who take and subscribe to this code of office and assume public offices have have resolved not to abide by court orders and are treating the court orders with outright abandonment. The Bill of Rights that is supposed to safeguard the rights of Kenyans is no, long, no longer matters to some. It is the responsibility of the court to restore accountability to the people of Kenya by holding the persons, however mighty, accountable. It may come at a considerable cost, but this must be done. The court has a responsibility to punish deliberate actions that undermine the Constitution and its authority. The faith and the trust of Kenyans in the rule of law that they have suffered for too long cannot be taken for granted and decimated through acts of impunity. The Constitution at Article 247, sub Article 7a, does in fact acknowledge the Inspector General can even be removed for violation of the Constitution, subject to following the red down process. It provides that the Inspector General may be removed from office where there is serious violation of the Constitution or any other law. And deliberate refusal to abide by the constitutional order or summons undermines the principle of rule of law and Article 10 to be and the failure to attend court to explain circumstances surrounding the disappearance of three petitioners undermines the principle of accountability by a public officer and institution. Ends of institutions must now be held accountable for ensuring constitutional values and principles are adhered to, particularly on a matter of human rights and the rule of law. As held this court at ransom, the court is no longer able to ascertain the truth of what might have happened to the petitioners. It was held in, uh, by the Court of Appeal in uh, the case of Dr. Fred Matiang and another versus Miguna Miguna and three others that 
bold impunity, open defiance, or a cynical disregard of the authority of the court and the integrity of the judicial system cannot be countenanced, and those hell-bent on it will find neither help nor refuge and self-serving appeal to natural justice where their imprudent conduct threatens the very foundation of the rule of law. It is my finding that the first respondent, acting Inspector General of Police, is guilty of contempt of court, and the court ought to punish him accordingly. Further, the court would like to note that there has been and become in contact by a senior police officer, the former JPU commandant, Lazarus Opicho, now the head of PVIP Protection Unit in the police, which the court <coughs> considers as bordering on intimidation. Now that's order that Mr. Lazarus Opicho be a decision by someone to explain the conduct that included calling my bodyguard and the driver trying to ascertain my whereabouts behind my back. I also need to ascertain what the reasons behind such an inquiry and many other concerns. I thus reserve the sentencing together with the explanation by Lazarus Opicho to Friday, 13th of September, 2024. Having found the first respondent, acting AIG, acting Inspector General of Police, guilty of content, the court is now free and ready to take the explanation provided by the DIG, since there is no more impediment to the hearing of the matter, the finding of content having been made after an opportunity to find the content having been extended and not taken. The court has no reason now to decline to hear the DIG who is before the court so that this matter can be put to rest.